I'm going to talk about how we made FutureLearn more accessible. Um, so, hi, I'm Nikki. I'm going to introduce FutureLearn very quickly and then talk a little bit about accessibility generally and then do a kind of really deep dive into like some detail of the specific problem that we were having recently and how we're going to fix it. And it takes about 15 minutes, so yeah. Uh, okay. So what is FutureLearn? Oh no, the flicker. Oh, yeah, this is it. terrible. How do I make it Ow. stop? No, it's... Um, we don't know why this is, but if you have a uh, white edge-to-edge, it'll flick the letter. Oh, <laughs> Good. Okay, well, let's uh, see how we go. Anyway, some of them are different colours. It'll be fine. Um, FutureLearn is an online social learning platform, which means that we do online courses um, with content partners by universities and cultural institutions like the British Library and the BBC um, online through our responsive website, as you can see here. Um, so what we mean when we talk about accessibility, you can see this, um, this is actually our mission statement. Um, I kind of have to roll my eyes a little bit when I say that because I, I hate those words, but that's, that's what it is. The best learning experiences for everyone anywhere. So what we think about when we talk about accessibility in that context is not just um, screen readers, if you've heard of those, not just screen magnifiers or people who just use the keyboard or people who just use the mouse. Um, the reality is that you know everybody is out there, has, they have different eyes and different brains and different fingers and they use computers in all different ways. And all of those people have to be able to do that, everyone, anywhere. So how do we do it? Um, you might have heard of organizations like the W3C and the WAI and WebAIM. These organizations very kindly think hard about these sort of issues and set up guidelines that we can just um, follow. It sounds really simple when you say it like that. But anyway, I'm going to go, go through a couple of them. Not all of them, because there's lots. Um, keyboard navigable. Um, obviously, this is, well, I think everybody in this room, the power users, probably understand why this might be um, important. But not just for power users, but for people like my mum, who has or gets arthritis and sometimes doesn't have a great range of movement in her arms. Or a colleague um, nearly broke his arm at the weekend and now can't move and is having trouble with that. Which kind of introduced to me this idea of a temporal disability. Like, yeah, it might not just be that, um, yeah, there's something, you know. Moving on. Providing text alternatives. Again, the kind of obvious one that you think of is like, oh, screen readers, we've got to do this because screen readers can't understand images. And that's kind of true, although I think people like Google are having a really good go at that. Um, but again, and specifically thinking about FutureLearn, um, not everybody learns really well through video or just pictures. So things like transcripts and subtitles on the videos are super important. Um, using more than just color. And this is where we kind of start shading into the crossover between accessibility and just kind of interaction principles and good design, I think. I choose to call it that. Um, so yes, obviously, people who are colorblind are going to have trouble differentiating if you don't use the right colors. But all kinds of people, uh, people with all kinds of low vision will have this similar sort of problem. And also, I found out while researching this stuff that there's a horrible thing that happens as you age. Um, the shades of blue that you can see become less, like they all kind of merge. And I was just like, oh, good thing that I like pink. So, um, and again, like obvious, this is good for everybody. You need to make sure things are clear and simple so that you can find the information quickly when you need it, not just, you know, because you have a learning, you know, dys uh, dyslexia or something like that. But you might just have a headache or a cold or be stressed or, you know. And similarly, again, the last one, the obvious. So this is more about, yeah, getting information in a timely fashion if you're in a hurry. So, yeah, this kind of stuff is good for everybody because, um, sorry to be depressing, but we all get old and we all have accidents. Um, again, another sort of factoid when I was researching this was something about um, one in three people over the kind of the course of their lives will have a period of what would be termed disability lasting up to months or years, which is kind of frankly terrifying. Um, not that I want to put the fear of God into you, but yeah. So these are kind of also, I picked these specific ones because I think they're kind of the easy ones that everyone's heard of and hopefully are doing in their sort of daily jobs. I think that you're probably familiar with these sort of guidelines. 
Um, and obviously some of them are going to come out of like, the colour and the language conversations with other people on the teams that we're using to build this stuff. So I think something that's really important to have in your head when you're, um, when you're having those conversations is kind of looking at this list of dusty, dry things that oh, I've got to do to make it accessible and get stuck in this mindset of, well, if I do these things or if I do just these things, you know, my site will be accessible but it will be really boring or it won't be very interesting visually um, or engaging or interactive. And I don't think those things are true. You can have both. They're not mutually exclusive goals. Um, so yeah, this was the specific problem that we were having um, on the site that we, were, we needed to fix. It was a bug. Um, bearing all of the previous points in mind, we wanted to fix a problem with our like button which is this tiny thing down in here that I realize now no one can see because I thought there'd be another screen, but um, yeah. So be zooming on in. When the cause, the, the problem, the bug that was there was when we hit like, we can see that the color changed, <laughs> oh God. Uh, but, and we know that's not enough, so we can't do, use just color. So we also update the like count so we show visually that something's going on. Um, so we think, oh, great, we've given some feedback. Unfortunately, as it stands, this is not enough. The markup that we were using made sure that it wasn't keyboard accessible and it wasn't screen reader accessible. So this is the same thing again, but if, as if it wasn't just a visual, but the screen reader was reading it out. And so if you haven't used one, a screen reader, um, it's just an app that sits on top of the browser. It's not like a, um, it's not the browser itself. And it can read any screen, any text that's on the screen, not just websites, but you know any other things that it happens to be on the computer. So you can see here it says like one, and when we hit it, crickets. So rubbish. Okay, we've got to fix this. Um, so yeah, and the way that we do this, we're a rail shop, so the whole partial just kind of gets spat back out, and that was the cause of one of the first problems that we had with the it wasn't keyboard accessible as we will see. So this was, yeah, the problem we were having, the like button, you can see it visually, but you can't hear what's going on. So this is one of our um, pages on the site. This is what a content step looks like. So over here on this, you have some learning and a video or an article, something that you're gonna, information that you're gonna take in. And then on the other side, you can talk about it with your fellow learners on the course. And this is kind of why we felt that this was a problem that we needed to fix specifically, not just because we want to make these things accessible to everybody, but liking is kind of an important part of the interaction between people. Um, we want to make people feel so good that when, <coughs> you know, like when they've been on Facebook and they get a lot of likes, so this is why. Um, so how do we do it? We use a tiny bit of JavaScript, ARIA roles, which we'll come on to later, and CSS. I presume you've heard of JavaScript and CSS. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway. Uh, ARIA stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And it's just some attributes that you add to your markup that other um, applications can read and understand. So we'll come back to that. So the JavaScript first. Um, yeah, this is where the JavaScript comes in, obviously. We mean JavaScript focus. Um, you don't need jQuery, I just couldn't fit anything else on the slide. Um, it's super simple. It sounds really kind of like, oh god, really? That, yeah, it is really simple, but that's good. Um, because we replaced that whole div, remember, now the DOM is like, hey, I don't even know where my focus is supposed to be. Um, in our case, then, as part of that response, we focus back on the like. We actually go right back to the specific like button, I think, because that's where your focus was when we kind of interrupted you. So this will fix the first problem for people using the keyboard. Um, yeah. So what happens if you don't? I have a video that's white, brilliant. Uh, so yeah, you can see we have focus, not very well because it's flickery, but that's how we're indicating our focus. Um, this is keyboard navigation only, so you shouldn't see a mouse pointer anywhere. Let's just see what happens, anything. So we've hit like, we've lost our focus, and I think I'm going to try and tab now to get the, to the next thing, and I'm miles away from where I wanted to be. Um, I'm not actually using the skip nav in this, because I wanted to show how painful it can be.
eventually. Yeah, so and eventually we get back to where we were, but it's kind of a pain. And if you did that, you know, comment threads can be like thousands and thousands and thousands of comments long, so it's very painful. So don't lose focus. I know it sounds really simple. Um, one of the things I really liked about this was that it kind of it felt a bit weird at first because there are so many sites that you see, those horrible spammy ones, where they kind of hijack your cursor or your key press or whatever. I was like, God, I don't want to be one of those people. But I think actually, you know, this is the right time to use this kind of tip. So ARIA roles, accessible rich internet applications, um, special attributes that you put on, the, on your HTML tags. You don't need to install anything on the server or the client to use them. They're just there. They're part of the spec. They should work as far as, as part of the spec goes, as we'll see. Um, so browser support in terms of, yeah, kind of Android was a bit shaky, but it's much better now. Um, it's kind of, it doesn't really tell the full story, can I use? Uh, because obviously there's lots of different types of accessible technology and devices that are reading the ARIA attributes, and these aren't all on that list. Um, they don't all work in everything, surprisingly. Um, but like CSS rules, they, the browsers or whatever will just kind of skip over anything they don't understand. So it's quite safe to use um, you know, anything. If it doesn't work in one particular device and you put it in any way for another one, that's fine. So uh, uh, ARIA Live is the one that we're particularly interested in today. There are lots of others, but this one is the one that we want to use right now. And this is what it does. Um, this is exactly what we want. We've just changed something on the page and uh, updated something. And now we want that update to be read out. Um, yeah, so the way I think of it is um, you put the ARIA Live attribute on the tag, and then it kind of registers itself with it and listens to it and all of the nested content within it as well. And if anything changes all the way down that tree, it kind of puts its hand up and says, I've changed. You can listen to me now, something. So it's great for giving feedback. Uh, it has, yeah, can take three values, polite, off, polite, and assertive. We used polite because it means don't interrupt. So if the person has started carrying on doing something else, like reading the rest of the comments, then it will do that until they're finished and then pop up and say. So it just doesn't interrupt, which is really nice. Um, when I was researching this as well, I found a weird, I think, I'm not sure if this is really true, a uh, screencast from about 2011, which seemed to imply that the assertive value before it was that used to be called rude. So you would be polite or rude, which I kind of feel like, hmm, good thing they changed it. So yeah, this is the result of all of that flickering. Um, one like, now two like. So we've put our ARIA Live role on there. And you can see, oh, cool, OK, we've got some text being read out. But you can, see, ah, you can see immediately there's a mismatch between the markup between, yeah, it's not a sentence. It's, uh, yeah, so this means we're going to have to use some CSS to hide some content from the screen and show only some content to different screen readers. And I'm looking kind of shifty at this point because I know it's not really the best thing to do. Um, this is the kind of hack part of the we were feeling really good earlier because we used the right tool for the right job, and now maybe not so much. This is a kind of workaround. Yeah. So this is what we did. Um, yeah, so this is kind of nearly what we ended up with. Um, you'll notice at this point we had to switch the source order as well to make it match the visual. We've got a new ARIA role of uh, ARIA hidden, so that will say to assistive technology, don't listen to me, I'm not interesting. Um, so that's the thing that is displayed visually, and then there is visually hidden utility class just to off screen. And then, then we can go mad in our visually hidden content area and kind of tell people a little bit more context about what's actually happening. So that's nice. And then finally, if you tried with a screen reader, this is what it would say. And this kind of makes a bit more sense, I think, as a sentence. So that's kind of it. Um, we used a tiny bit of JavaScript, reset the focus, make sure that keyboard people don't get taken out of the flow, a few ARIA roles to make sure the feedback gets announced at the right time, and other content is available, and then the CSS just to hide things. Um, question time. Oh, and confession time first. Um, and I have a question for you. I've actually never used Ember, so 
Um, yeah. Ta -da. But I wondered if um, if there's anything that strike like you pick out immediately of the framework, or that could be in the framework that would help this kind of problem or help us solve it. So that's yeah. Why do you think about that? I can I answer your questions maybe, if you have any. Hello. Hey. Um, I'm imagining that the focus is because you're replacing whole div. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yes, we could have done that the other way around and just done the element. Yeah, so I'm imagining if it was just a just a link, then yeah. that would be fine. You'd still have to probably swap the whole div anyway to get the nice two likes you like this. So in that sense, to make uh, the like button more accessible to screen readers, you would have to replace the div to manipulate all the content. Yes. Yes. Cool. I think that's right. Hello. How do you manage testing this? So I can imagine that's the kind of thing you, you can come along, do a fix the problem once, and then in the future someone else comes and adjusts the markup because they've got a new design or something. Is there anything that you can? Do you have? What would you What would you suggest organisations do to continue to make sure that? That you don't get regression. This happens. I can tell you exactly what we do, which is that we write the markup and describe why we're writing it that way in a commit message in Git. And then the next person who comes along um, will know why we did that, I guess. And we have tests so that stuff fails as well, obviously. We're, it's a Rails app in case, sorry, I didn't show that. So there's lots of specs all over the place for that kind of thing. And um, manual testing as well, not every time with screen readers. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of testing. In various forms. Is there any way of specifying a test for the screen reader should say? <gasps> oh, uh, well, it will read the content of the element of the marker. So, yes, by having the content there, I guess. You check one element or not the other. So you can just say, load this page and then expect the screen reader to say, do you like, do you like this? Like, at that sort of level. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I'm not aware of um, screen reader simulations for things like RSpec or Jasmine or anything like that. Um, it would be good. But yeah, no, at the moment we just check that the right content is in the right place. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, these are some really good more links, by the way, and stuff that was super useful when I was um, making it. The, uh, the examples of different um, times that having those kind of principles would be this A to Z, it's A to Z of accessibility. Um, which I kind of stole a lot of the examples for, so I don't think I made all of those up. Hello, Jamie. Um, are, there any, are there any bits of the UI where you had to completely rethink it for the screen reader? This one, yes. <laughs> it's on our list, yeah. Iterative, yeah. I think next time we come back to this, we'll be, yeah, thinking a bit clearly, more clearly about it up front. And um, sorry, you had to. Um, I was just going to say, like, I think everyone probably likes to think better um, making things accessible, and often they're probably not. Um, but I definitely do not know enough about the different types of accessibility. So you know, you mentioned how um, everyone at some point in their life will have some disability or something like that for a short period of time. Um, is there like a, a resource, or did you stumble across something which had like a load of like use cases that might change your mind about how to do things. That yes. on the that's this one. Oh, wicked. The A okay. to Z, A to Z. Yeah. yeah. So and that's it's just like, oh, have you thought about this? Yeah. It's about literally this an alphabet, uh, like Amazing. 26. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, and that. it kind of changed my view on it as well. Yeah. It was I think that's probably the takeaway that I get is that the way that I put it together, I go, and there's a screen reader at some point. Yeah. Whereas, in actual fact, even changing the language yeah. is, is, a, is a good thing. Yeah. 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 There's a whole bunch of stuff going on there, you know. So, hello. Hi. Uh, so, uh, the question is not technology based, but just more about kind of the business case justification. I mean, these, these sort of accessibility features, as you point out, are important. Um, they may not be top of mind for someone who's racing out there and a new startup to build these things in. But how did you justify the cost that, they, that comes with it? And, and is there any sort of guidelines in terms of who needs to be doing this sooner rather than later? I guess everybody, really. I mean, going back to those kind of, the last few points on the pink slides of things like clear design, that's up front for everybody, clear, simple descriptions and instructions. Um, we're a learning site, so things like subtitles for the videos and transcripts and stuff like that, we really just have to have. 
just because, not because we have to be accessible, but because yeah, we're missing half the people who don't like watching videos, or who can't, um, who can't watch videos at work, because... Well, let me ask you this in a different way. So is, are there any actually any legal requirements that you have to do? Videos? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. The European law stipulates that you need to make your sites accessible. Um, however, there's a clause in it that says you have to do it reasonably accessible in terms of not making you bankrupt in the process of doing it. So uh, there is, you have to actually work towards making things accessible. Most banks and financial institutions or public bodies are required legally to at least hit a minimum set of accessibility requirements um, for which we, you know, my company that I work for has had a lot of over it. But you know, there, is, there is legal requirements, so it's worth thinking about it as well. Because if you do become successful, you need to have a strategy that you can either roll out quite quickly or have at least put some space and stuff in initially. Just one comment with your like button. So it, I think sometimes we try to solve problems using technology when sometimes it could be when you click the button it says you liked it. Um, and, and I think sometimes it's also thinking about it in a way that is accessibility is considering things beyond a technical solution but a perception thing. So I am quite busy and I have the mind of a goldfish and forget what I've done. And so I'll be on Facebook and then someone will come because I'm you know supposed to be working and interrupt me on Facebook because you know it's more important to be on Facebook. Um, and they'll, then I'll be like, oh where was I? And I tell I like this. And so it's even like the, the language clues and mm -hmm. the sorts of things that you can do that are even you know quite simple and not necessarily technical. Yep. Um, and it's worth talking to people like copywriters and other sorts of people like that as well because they will think about things that you, you know, us who are technology will never mm -hmm. consider. It's like, I have a technical solution for this. It's amazing. It'll work. And it could be something even simpler. It's an ongoing battle we have with that button. One of the solutions we considered for this problem was just to get rid of the whole thing entirely. And then, <laughs> and then the problem goes away, right? Um, especially because there's kind of concerns over cannibalizing commenting. Because actually, what we really want is conversation, and yeah. so if you, you know, if you let somebody kind of be very lasse, you know, not really interested in it, then yeah. Um, one one comment from the JavaScript framework world. Um, oh yeah. There's a project called React Accessibility, and what that oh. does is it it lists your components as they arrive in the DOM, and it will look out for certain like obvious mistakes. Obviously, it can't spot everything, but it does stuff like if you've got click handler on a div. Yep. it will say to you, hey, do you want roll button on this, or should you just use a button for this? Right. And it'll be stuff like that, and it'll, it'll try and look out for bits of text which it can see will get angled and become unintelligible to the screen reader, and there's a port of that for Edward as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a JavaScript framework to give you the, the opportunity to do this kind of thing. I'm sure you can do it, but you could take the same approach with just scanning the, the DOM. And yeah. Like any linter, you, know, you can assemble a compendium of common mistakes and just look out for them, this is what this mm -hmm. does, and then it issues a load of warnings into the, um, the JavaScript console, so you'll see them all there, and your developers can go and mm, ignore them, yeah, or this, yeah. or whatever they want to do. Um, could you put that into your build process, do you think, so it would fail? Yeah, so. something like that. And is that something that Ember contributors would consider moving into the core, or would that be a, like... Core of the framework? Yeah. Uh, As part of the... React, I'm not sure. Ember, it's, you know, if enough of the community wanted it to be there, then Good. Anyone else? Can I? S oh, okay. Sorry. Hello. In terms of the um, <coughs> analytics side on your site, can you tell what sort of uh, what disabilities people have or accessibility issues um, people have? Mm, yeah, sorry. In an automated fashion, yeah. I don't think so. Um, okay. It's not like browser um, <laughs> screen readers don't have user strings or anything like that. Yeah. So. Oh, maybe they do. No, they don't. Oh. But that's, <laughs> that's because screen read manufacturers don't want to announce that they're screen readers because they believe ah, that yes. developers will ah. give a subpar experience to mm. people if they know you're using screen reader. So that's one example of why assistive tech doesn't announce itself. Then it takes the mystery shopper approach. Mm. I think, right, the best, right, I think they're justified yeah, yeah, yeah. in this approach. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we've all been sent to a mobile website. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but that's why that's, yeah. that's why it's hard to get statistically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have um in a, we have a weird thing in our team where we each sprint one developer spends the day doing QA and tech support 
And on the days that I've done tech support, I've had blind users emailing me and talking to me and telling me that like, the thing doesn't work. And eventually we get down to the problem is that they're using a text-only browser. And you're just like, oh, right, OK, cool. And then I'm really interested and I want to talk to you more about it. Um, probably bad use of QA time. Um, can, can I ask, could we show of hands, who's used a screen reader? For those who haven't, you should really have a go. I think they're incredible pieces of software and they use all other kinds of clues to tell you about what's going on. For example, they use the stereo field to tell you about where your cursor is on a particular page and, and all sorts of audio indicators to tell you what's going on and what you're interacting with. Uh, also, a funny fact is I think we all should be concerned. There is, we are, um, at least one of us, some of us are quite concerned about the IA8 support, and it turns out that there's more blind people than people, than people using an Explorer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, remove support for Explorer, or if you have to choose, choose to support yeah. blind people. Yeah, <laughs> accessibility, not access, explore it. <laughs> yes, quite. Perfect. All right, let's hear it. Oh, good. Oh, good.